Nom Nom delivers fresh food with whole ingredients, backed by veterinarian science. Science tells us that a dog's health starts in the bowl, so improving their diet is one of the best ways to help them live a long and happy life. Nom Nom's food is full of proteins your dog loves and the vitamins and nutrients they need to thrive. All you have to do is order, pour, and serve. Ready to make the switch to fresh? Order Nom Nom today. Go to https colon slash slash trinom.com forward slash curveball and get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's https colon slash slash T-R-Y-N-O-M dot com forward slash curveball. Plus, Nom Nom comes with a money back guarantee. If your dog's tail isn't wagging within 30 days, Nom Nom will refund your first order. No fillers, no nonsense, just Nom Nom. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by author, thought leader, digital strategist, and podcast host, Chris Hood. Chris has over 35 years of experience with business development and digital strategy. He used to work with Google, and now he consults with the top companies on aligning with their customers and growing their business. So we're going to be talking to him about his story. Chris, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. A pleasure to be here. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, you covered most of it, but my name is Chris Hood. I am a digital strategist, author, podcast host. I spend a lot of time working with companies to help them understand how to build customer-centric cultures and how to think about customers as the central focus across all of the departments within an organization. And that's often very challenging for companies to think about because they usually think, well, sales and marketing, that's customer focused. But like our human resources, our technology teams are typically internally focused. So I try to change that narrative. My book, Customer Transformation, which we can get into, covers a seven-step strategy to help organizations go through that process and, and become more customer-centric. And uh, I love talking about technology, love talking about movies, try to bring in some pop culture references along the way. But yeah, that's a little bit about me. Well, tell the listeners what a digital strategist is. Sure. So when we think about digital, we're thinking about anything that we are engaged with from a mostly a technology perspective, but we're thinking about things like online and social media and products that are online. Our email is digital, as opposed to if I'm walking into a store and I'm shopping, that experience is at a brick and mortar. It typically doesn't really handle technology, but what we're seeing is a lot of technology is being influenced now in our day-to-day -day lives. For instance, as simple as going to the grocery store and buying your groceries with your debit card, that's a digital transaction. Now you can go to the grocery store and buy with your phone using, say, Apple Pay. That's a digital transaction. So that evolution of how we engage with technology throughout our daily lives, I break that down. I try to help organizations, businesses, companies, entrepreneurs and figure out ways to implement it to meet their customer needs. Okay, so you you used to work for Google. So tell us about that, uh, what you did at Google, and what, what was that like for working for Google? Because everybody knows Google. Yeah, well, everybody knows Google, and Google is a fun place to work. I worked there for six years, and I 
had a great opportunity to work with a lot of big companies and big brands, again, all in this digital space. What we found was we would have companies that would come to us and say, hey, you know, we have this new idea or we want to embrace a, a new technology. Obviously, artificial intelligence has, is a great example of embracing a new technology. And how do we use that to build better products and services? Again, going back to consumers. So I gave examples of like Apple Pay as an example, but think about like Domino's Pizza. Whenever the last time you ordered Domino's, you can log in, you can place your order online. Now they offer the ability to order pizza and have it delivered anywhere. You could be on a park bench at somewhere and just put a pin into where you're at and somebody will deliver a pizza to you. That's the type of technology that I was helping people uh, embrace and unlock while at Google. And I loved it because it was always something new and, and fresh, exciting, and really got to the point where I was helping organizations be more successful. And I think that's really what drives me is, is how can we leverage technology to help businesses be more successful. And I'll always bring it back to and reach the needs and demands of their consumers. Okay, well, talk about your seven step strategy for customer transformation and also the key elements that contributed to you writing your book. Yeah. So a few years ago, maybe well, I say a few years ago, more like eight years ago, I started to see that the technology was overtaking the focus of what the technology is being used for, the customer. For example, we've used the shopping and going to the grocery store as a great example. If you went to the grocery store and they said, sorry, we don't take ATMs, we only take cash, you might get a little frustrated by that. And you might decide I'm going to go to a different grocery store or Domino's is another good example. If, if you're trying to log in and order your pizza and you have a problem with the website and it's not working the way you want it to work, you might go off to Pizza Hut because it's an alternative. We get very frustrated very quickly when the technology doesn't work the way we want it to work. And yet most businesses were focused so heavily on the technology and forgetting the purpose of that technology, which is to serve your customers. Why are you building technologies if your customers aren't asking for it? And so I started to play around with this framework of re-establishing the focus back to the customer, the customer being the primary reason why you are building technologies the customer being the primary reason you're in business. So I wrote a book called Customer Transformation, which follows seven steps and aligns what customers are looking for, that expectation, how they want to engage with you with the internal business operations. The seven steps, and we can go through them in more detail, but at a high level, they are customers, which is the first step. You, you have to understand who your customer is. The second step is interfaces, which is how is the customer interfacing with your business? And typically that is like with your mobile device or a tablet or some other technology is that interface. The third part is the journey. What is the uh, experience, the customer experience, the customer journey that they are going on when engaging with you. The fourth one is ecosystem. This is all based on the community that is around your business. It's, we can talk social media or just a community in general, how you build partnerships with other businesses. That's the ecosystem. The fifth step is the culture. This is the culture of your business, the culture inside of your organization and making sure that that culture is focused on the customer. The sixth one is technology. So we've gotten all the way through this to, to finally reach the technology. What's all the types of software and services and the technology that we want to use to uh, supply these services back to the customer? And the seventh one is the business. 
It's the actual value that the business is going to generate if they follow through these seven steps. Uh, inside of business is also your leadership. How is the leadership aligned with your customers' needs and aspirations? So that's high level, the seven steps. Okay. And if the listeners want to uh, dig deeper, we can keep them curious and let them purchase your book. Let's talk about digital acceleration. You already talked about how businesses can benefit with dominoes and delivering anywhere, which I didn't know that they can deliver anywhere now. But let's talk about some of the crucial factors for a business to consider in this era of digital acceleration that we're in. Yeah, sure. I think the big turning point with digital was the pandemic. For example, we all started to have to work from home. And in the process of working from home, we needed technology to be able to connect and communicate and have meetings. No different than school. A lot of schools, well, pretty much all of the schools started to have homeschooling and students needed to be able to log in. If we even think about the podcast right now, we are on Zoom having a conversation on a podcast. Previously, you might have done this in person, but that's hard when we have people who are in completely different places. So the pandemic really helped us change our mindset in terms of technology, and it accelerated the need for that technology in a lot of our businesses. Again, having to work remotely changed. So if you look at as we move forward, that acceleration is going to continue. I touched on artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is changing how businesses are doing work. And so a business, a company, uh, even us as individuals, we want to keep up with those technology changes, those trends that are happening. And for a business, they're going to be required to do that. So the acceleration is all about understanding where technology is going and being able to adapt to meet those changes in technology in order to, again, keep up with what customers are expecting. If a customer is working from home and they expect to be able to log in to have a meeting, you're going to have to have the technology in place to do that. Well, what happens now is a customer is going to be expecting to engage with some form of artificial intelligence. They're going to reach out to you and you don't have it. Well, then what are you going to do? If, if you're not meeting those needs, they might go to a competitor. So acceleration is all about really looking towards the future, understanding what the trends are, and really being able to keep up with those changes as opposed to waiting for something drastic to happen and then being forced to do it. What are some of the drawbacks with the digital acceleration era? Well, the biggest drawback is obviously not being able to do it. If you cannot keep up with those changes, then you potentially are going to lose business. The other big drawback is, is you start to invest in things that may not materialize as something that your customers want, which is why it's important to understand what your customers are asking for and focus on those technologies. So I'll go back to artificial intelligence again. A lot of people are probably sitting here and listening, thinking, yes, we need artificial intelligence. We have to bring in artificial intelligence. Well, the question becomes, what is your customer going to get out of that? Is your customer asking for artificial intelligence? Is your customer asking for something that you can use AI to implement? If the answers are no, they don't care, they don't need it, they're not asking for it, then you shouldn't be investing the time and money into it. But one of the challenges challenges for a lot of companies are is, is is starting to think, well, it's out there. People are talking about it. It's the next big thing. I have to invest in it. And that's not really the best approach. You still have to understand what is its use case? Why do you need it? And make sure that you're basing those decisions on data as opposed to just going with what the trends are. 
Okay, well, l- let's talk about business leadership in that digital age versus the traditional business leadership. Talk about some of the characteristics and how they differ from one one to the other. Well, I don't think leadership mostly altogether changes too much, right? Leadership is leadership. However, the tools that you have available to you and the mechanisms by which individuals can engage with you obviously have changed. So I'll give you a good example of this. I fully believe that leaders should be in touch with what customers are asking for. I write an entire chapter about this in my book. Well, there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could set up a meeting, invite some customers in, sit down with them, have a conversation. What's working? What's not working? What can we do differently? Or you can leverage technology to gather insights. Maybe not as simple as just doing a survey, but let's say you do a survey. Is the leader of the organization reading the survey results or are they relying on other people in the organization to make those interpretations and execute on it? I think good leaders are still always focused on meeting the needs of the consumer. And that means diving into what are they asking for, whether that is by a survey or whether that is meeting them in person. There are a a lot of understand what customers are looking for, how they engage with you, what the adoption rate of your business and and products are, personalization from a marketing perspective. Good leaders understand that. Good leaders are constantly engaged with that. This isn't about just handing things over and delegating. It's about actively participating in the process so that you can stay customer centric and making decisions based on that data. Bad leaders are ones who are biased, who are taking their own opinions and executing on them. And we see a lot of businesses out there, a lot of big, large companies. One that comes to mind right now is Disney. Disney is making awful decisions And they're making those decisions purely based on the leadership and the biases that those leaders have. And when you do that, you run into substantial problems. So leverage the technology, leverage the data specifically, and then make decisions that is rooted in the data of what customers are asking for. Talk about why it's so important to build a culture of praise in today's business world. Yeah, your culture is really a a substantial piece of being a successful business. And anybody who has been in the corporate world or has had a job really is, is probably more than familiar with internal corporate politics and managers that don't care about you and treat you poorly. We all wake up and we dread to go to the to the job. And a lot of that is rooted in the culture of an organization. So when you begin to open that up and allow individuals within your company to be successful, to contribute to the success of the company, to share ideas, to be recognized for those ideas, to uh, bring in a level of psychological safety, uh, allow people to fail and allow that failure to be learning moments and growth moments is is so critical. And we see a drastic difference in companies that are successful when they remove the politics from the organization by implementing praise into their organization. Now, in my book, I've written, again, an, another one of the chapters is on praise and this praise framework, which all starts, it's It starts P-R-A-I-S-E. P is purpose. What is the purpose of the organization? And if you have team members and, and employees that are aligned with that purpose, then that's a great starting point for you because then you don't have people who are off doing their own thing and another leader who has their own ideas. That's when this bias starts to creep in. That's when the 
toxic personalities start to take over. But a centralized purpose is foundationally what you want to uh, understand. This could be your mission statement, but more importantly, it's ensuring that the employees are aligned with that mission statement, that, that they believe in it. And of course, the biggest purpose of any business is your customers. I would argue that the customer is your first and primary purpose. After that, it could be any number of things that that you might want to drive, whether it's uh, you know changes in society, maybe it's it's a, a good cause, maybe it's uh, you know uh, electric vehicles which have a purpose. Like you can still have that as your mission, but you're still driving an ultimate goal that is meeting the needs of your consumers and your employees have to be aligned with that. If they are not, then you create disruption, which ultimately creates chaos, which ultimately leads to lost profits. Where do you see things like customer transformation, digital strategy and digital acceleration going in the next five years and what trends should leaders be prepared for to be able to meet the needs of the next five years? Yeah, I think over the course of the next five years, we're going to see a stronger alignment to these customer-centric processes and rooted in actual data and science to validate it. So as consumers gain more power, and, and we're seeing that because consumers have direct connections with the businesses they engage with, for example, Twitter, we'll call it now X, I can complain directly on my social media to the company that is not serving me the way I want it to serve me. That is instant feedback. That is a, a voice that is more powerful today than it was, say, 10 years ago. That's going to continue. And businesses are going to need to find ways to uh, meet those challenges of that consumer voice that is growing. And, and as consumers have more direct ties to the companies and the brands that they are passionate about, organizations are going to have to start to make better decisions that align with those demands. And so in order to do that, you're going to need data and data is going to solve everything from internal processes to cultural change, to employee satisfaction, to customer satisfaction, pricing decisions, marketing decisions. Today, we are relying heavily on, we'll, we'll call it the expertise, and I'm going to put expertise in air quotes. We're relying on the expertise of the employees, but Again, we are human. We will fail. We will make bad decisions. The data is going to allow us to make better decisions. And so as technology evolves, as consumers grow closer to the brands that they are loyal to, as they expect more, as they have closer ties to those businesses, we're going to have to rely on the data to help us make accurate decisions. This is where artificial intelligence is going to come in to help us make those decisions. It's going to help us improve processes and policies to better address those consumer demands. And so I would say in the next five years, through customer transformation, you're going to see a much stronger alignment of a lot of businesses with and directly for what their customers are asking for. And the starting point, of course, is go read my book. It outlines all of it. Also want the listeners to check out your podcast. So tell us about your podcast, where, where they can find it and what they can expect when they listen to it. Yeah. So my podcast is called the Chris Hood Digital Show, and you can reach it on your favorite podcast platform or you can find it on my website, chrishood.com as well as my book, everything, social media. If you want to follow me, everything that I do is on my website. And on my podcast, we break down some of these very popular topics. 
and uh, try to just dive into them. I, I bring on a guest, an, an expert in a specific area, and we start to just dissect it. Uh, as an example, I recorded a podcast today about process science. And process science is this concept of analyzing processes and leveraging data to improve the efficiency of organizations. So really, the podcast is about tackling issues that we are all faced with, whether they are personally or professionally, and how are we going to navigate those changes and, and those challenges that we are faced with over the course of the next two, three years. Tell us about any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about. Yeah, the, the biggest one that I'm working on right now is my book. We've talked about it. It's called Customer Transformation. It's a seven-stage business strategy for customer alignment and business value. And I'm traveling all over the country, speaking with companies about customer transformation, helping them embrace the concepts, helping them get more uh, centralized in how they respond to customer needs. Uh, I, a lot of my podcast right now is on various chapters. My blogs and articles that I'm writing is is all around that. So yeah, I'm putting a lot of effort and emphasis into not just the book, but the framework and helping businesses be successful through that framework. Okay. Well, you threw out your contact info, chrishood.com. So close us out with some final thoughts. Maybe if there was something that I forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about or just any final thoughts you have for the listeners. No, I think the final thoughts is here's a, a great one for you to start with and to think about. We as individuals are all customers. You're a customer. I'm a customer. All of our listeners are customers. You go to stores. You go to eat at restaurants. You drive a car potentially or take public transformation or use an Uber. In every single case, you are the customer. And what a lot of people forget, especially when they're growing a business or when they're working at a company, is to think about that, to take a moment, pause and stop and think, well, wait a second, I'm a customer. How would I feel about this? How would I respond to this? And if you feel like it's a negative, like you wouldn't like it as a customer, then find a way to improve it, find a way to change it. But we talk a lot about be in the customer's shoes, walk a mile in the customer's shoes, like understand that's customer empathy, understand what the customer wants, but you are a customer. So think about that as you're shopping and as you're out at your favorite uh, store and what is the experience like? Take that, learn from it, and then apply the same principles into your own company's products and services. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, chrishood.com. Please be sure to check out that book and the podcast. Chris really knows a lot about business development and digital strategy. Please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many business and business owners, business people as possible. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, see Jackson 102 at Cox.net is the place to send them. As always, thank you for listening. And Chris, thank you so much for joining and sharing your expertise. My pleasure. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.